Benny. Oh, you are so cute, Bindi. Everyone always says, she wags her tail, she's angry. No, Bindi's a spotty dog. That just means she's happy. Some cats like to wag their tails when they're happy. Just like Binny. Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Mick. The time has come for us to finally upgrade our home network and it's also the network that we use for Gear Seekers and everything, obviously because we work from home. However, I didn't film any of it. I just went and did it and now I'm gonna show you what I ended up doing to upgrade our network. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Ta-da! So I'm gonna walk you through the entire setup and some considerations we have to make when we want a high performance network in an apartment and things you might look out for if you're wanting to do the same thing in an apartment kind of like ours. So let's get into it. I think it's probably better if we sit down and I talk about a few of the considerations. So some of the main considerations for building a network in an apartment is sound and heat. So I had to go with a solution that was basically going to be passively cooled and not generate more heat than was required and also about power consumption as well. I've been using Ubiquiti products for a long, long time and they didn't sponsor this video. We bought everything that you're seeing in this video. It took me like a couple weeks to accumulate all the gear because with the silicon shortage and stuff as well, it's actually impacted networking gear quite a lot as well. And it's driven the prices up for a lot of the small stuff too. So we had to take that into consideration. We had to kind of budget what we wanted the network to do. And we actually ran into like a couple issues with it as well. Uh, basically because of the way that this apartment is wide, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. So for the router, I had a Ubiquiti Edge Router X for many years and it did its job quite well. However, it did get quite hot. So I decided to switch our router out for something a lot more modern and a lot more configurable. So I went with the brand new Ubiquiti Unify Dream Machine SE. Now this is an upgraded version of the Dream Machine that's got 2.5 gigabit WAN as well as 10 gig WAN if you're using an SFP. It's got power over ethernet on all of the gigabit ports here so I can power all of our access points around the house because we already used Ubiquiti access points through the house but we actually upgraded all of those as well. I'm gonna show you that a little bit later as well. Also went with the USW. Now this USW is a little bit different because this is an SFP plus base one only. It's an aggregation switch. It's a 10 gig switch only. Obviously it's designed for layer two aggregation. So it can do a couple really cool things which I'll show you when we show you the network layout later and a Unify Flex XG as well. And this is only here to solve a problem with transceivers. Now, when you're using SFP plus switches and routers and that kind of stuff, if you don't have the appropriate cable, you can adapt them to other standards like RJ45. So for instance, we use these 10G Tech SFP transceivers. Now this is a 10 gig to ethernet. So you can plug any ethernet cable in, but the first issue we had with the setup was this only has a 30 meter range, right? So this actually did become an issue with our network. Our whole apartment is wired through the walls with Cat6A, which means if any cable in the network through the walls is longer than 30 meters, it's going to drop the link speed, even though it reports it as 10 gigabit to 1.25 gigabit. Everything in this cabinet is 10 gig. However, because everything is less than 30 meters, we have no degradation signal. The direct attached copper cables we use are rated for whatever length the cables are, which is maximum three meters in this cabinet. Because the Flex XG switch has a much longer range than 30 meters for the built-in 10 gig ports, what I did is I plugged it into the aggregation switch with one of these transceivers with a 30 centimeter cable and then the two patch panel ports on the wall for 10 gig to Claire's office and to my office is full 10 gig. Obviously this is in my office, but the ethernet port for my PC is on the other side of the office. Because this is a layer two switch and it's basically just doing MAC address translation, Unify OS actually reports this Flex XG as being directly connected to the UDM, which is actually pretty cool but that's just standard layer two networking stuff. We're actually pretty fortunate in our apartment here in Australia to have the good NBN. We've got fiber to the premises and we've got 
a gigabit connection. So if I just run a quick speed test on the other side of the office, you can see what kind of throughput we're getting here as well. We're getting pretty close to a flat one gig internet connection. Obviously the upload speed here in Australia isn't amazing, but you know, we're getting pretty close to hitting those speeds. And that's one thing I really love about these new unified devices is we've got these little touchscreen LCDs on them. So you can do a little bit of configuration here and there. I just think it's just so cool. All of your unified gear actually talk to each other in the rack. So if I swipe down here to something, it'll show the same settings panel on the other device on the network as well. So this one's been up for seven days. I had to reboot the UDM yesterday. Say for instance, on the USW, I go to throughput. If I just tap the throughput, it'll show it on both at the same time. I put everything inside a networking cabinet. Now this is just a six RU unit. It cost me about a hundred bucks and it was the perfect size and depth for this hole that I already had here in the cabinet. So that actually worked out to be quite good. Obviously Dream Machine SE at the top. We've got some brush plates between each rack unit, not only for cable management and making everything look prettier, but also for thermal. So everything's not sitting up against each other. And there's another brush plate down here. This was gonna get another USW, the same one. However, because of the problems I was having with the transceivers, I decided to just let that rest on top of this little one U rack mounted PDU. For now, this is gonna do exactly what I need it to do. As mentioned, that Flex XG plugs straight into the patch panel on the wall for these ports here. And you can see the one that says N office, which means Nick's office. That one comes out on the other side which is down here and I've got another Flex XG, then my editing PC and everything that I use on this side of the office is also 10 gig as well. And that's the main reason why we we're not using those transceivers because there must be more than 30 meters of cable in this apartment. Obviously we didn't build it, so we don't know, but yeah, you know, that's life. For those that are interested in these ethernet cables that you're seeing in the video as well, these are monoprice ones. I got them on Amazon for really cheap. And the reason why I got them is they're super thin easy to cable manage. And I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in these awesome little ethernet cables. They come in every length. I basically ordered a 10 pack of almost all the lengths. For the Wi-Fi, I upgraded all of the Wi-Fi in the house to these Unify 6 Wi-Fi 6 access points. They're actually pretty cheap for what they are and they're smaller than regular Unify APs. The light version obviously because they're smaller, but also because they don't come with PoE injectors and stuff like that. So you need to really plan out how you're going to lay your network out if you need to use PoE for your devices. And this one, obviously, because I'm using the UDM and this new UDM has PoE, I didn't have to worry about powering any of the access points, even the other ones in the house, because we've got two more. We've got another one of these in the living room. In the bedroom, we've got one of the old Unify access points that we had that we didn't want to get rid of. And we kind of, arrange it in a way that most of the devices in our house are not Wi-Fi 6. So it works well as a mesh for the older devices, but the newer devices will automatically prioritize these new access points. So any laptops or anything or any systems I'm testing that have Wi-Fi 6 on the motherboard, I'll just connect them to the Wi-Fi 6 now. Sometimes not even ethernet, just straight up to this. I never film this stuff with the Black Magics, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Here we go, handheld filming with the Black Magic. I'm, I'm gonna climb up a step ladder. Don't do this at home, ready? I'm gonna show you where the other access point is. This is a bad idea. Oh, there's our YouTube silver play button that's just chilling up there. The other Wi-Fi 6 access point is up the top here in the house. Now, you might be saying, hey, it's off, there's no light on. Actually, in Unify OS, you can control the light settings on them. And because this kind of faces towards our bedroom at night, the, it's blue and bright and I turned it off. Some of the keen eyed might have spotted this sitting here. That's for an upcoming video. Make sure you get yourself subscribed to see this because this is a couple hundred terabytes of unprovisioned storage. And there is a very cool and very expensive Juniper switch that we're saving for when we eventually move houses because we're going to do everything with fiber. So, you know, you can see where my brain's going with this stuff. I didn't choose the data center life, it chose me. This is our network topology. 
Everything on our network, if you haven't noticed already, is mainly named after places from Final Fantasy games. That's just my naming convention that I use for our home network. And it makes sense to me because I know what all the stuff is. So Gaia is usually Earth, so it's home. Uh, this is the UDMSE. And the wiring is different to the way that Unify OS will report things because of the way that layer two translation actually works. It's all MAC address based. So with the Midgar switch, which is the one that is actually physically connected into Nautilus, because it's a layer two switch, it basically just bypasses any type of IP address and says, hey, we're plugged directly into that UDM SE. I mean, that's a really basic explanation. I'm not gonna dive into this too much, but this is something that is just good to know when you're using any type of aggregation, especially if you're aggregating your connections with direct attached copper and it's a layer two switch, this is gonna be the case most of the time. So anyway, if we drill down into Nautilus, you can see here, it's got a 10 gig link here. And this is the aggregation switch. You can see this is the physical server that's plugged into it. Then we've got a virtual machine. This is the NAS. And then we've got another virtual machine here. They've all got their 10 gig links respectively. Now, if we go down to Midgar, which is actually plugged into Nautilus, you can see that CLAS, which is Claire's computer, that's plugged in directly into that through the termination in the wall. Then we've got Moonflow, which is the 10 gig switch on my side of my office. And you can see my editing PC is connected to that right now. We've got Altisha, which is actually the computer that I'm using right now to do this. I've actually got my gaming PC on at the moment as well, which is called Insomnia. That's got a 2.5 gig link because it doesn't have a 10 gig NIC, but it's my gaming PC, it doesn't really need it. And then, which is, this is something you shouldn't actually do but you know, it's okay for a home network. Uh, I've got another switch plugged into that 10 gig switch, which is one of the really small Unify switches. This is the Flex Mini. They're like 20 bucks. It's a, it's a one gig switch and I've got that with my Mac Mini plugged in. It's also got a bunch of other random stuff plugged in that isn't turned on. So I use this for testing and just doing other random stuff. So that's the main part of the wired network. But with Unify OS, you can do other cool stuff like this. So say for instance, I wanna know what everything is by the port. I've actually tagged everything here. So I've got the office access point living room, which is the living room connection that Bermesia is connected to. We've also got the kitchen access point, the bedroom access point, and it actually tells you how much power each outlet is also drawing to. And then we've got the 10 gig downlink as well, which goes into Nautilus. And if we look at Nautilus and we check the port layout as well, you can see that We've got direct attached copper to that server. Then we've got 10 gig, which is using the transceiver to the NAS. We've got the UDM uplink, which goes back into the UDM. And then we've got our RJ45 downlink, which plugs into Midgar. If we look at the tags I've got on Midgar, we've got our 10 gig downlink, which is into Moonflow. We've got the studio downlink, which is going into Claire's PC. And then we've got a 10 gig uplink as well, which goes back into Nautilus. Then if we go into Moonflow, I haven't tagged this at all because it doesn't make sense because I can physically see this switch. So I don't need to know what each port is doing because I can just unplug things and rearrange them. But as you can see, it's fully stacked right now. It's got everything plugged in. Then you may have noticed this other Flex Mini switch. This is a one gig switch going to our entertainment unit. This is for stuff like the TV itself. If we've got one of the PlayStations or an Xbox plugged in or our gaming PC that's on the TV as well. Obviously those things aren't on, but again, I don't really need to tag them, but I have tagged the port where the TV is plugged in and also the port where the UDM uplink is as well. There is something else plugged into this port, but it's reporting 10 megabit because the PC is off, so it's just idle. You can then see our three access points. So. Wutai is the access point in the middle of the house. Medill is the one in my office because it's the middle, right? Okay, it's not really, but you know. And then we've got Junoon as well, which is the old access point. If you click them, it actually tells you the model number of them, all the IP information. I don't really care if you guys know this stuff because it doesn't really matter. It's in our internal network. Uh, there's also a list of all of the devices that are physically connected. I can break this out to show you guys what it looks like. It's gonna take up the whole screen, but uh, yeah, you can see that a bunch of our smart lighting, we use LifeX downlights throughout the whole house. So all of our house has smart lighting. 
And it's also got our aircon will display here as well. As well as if I open up Medill, which is also another one of these new Wi-Fi 6 access points, which is the one that I showed on top of the cabinet out there. There's a whole bunch of other stuff, which is other bunch of smart lighting. Our phones and stuff are connected to this as well. And we've got the last one, Junin, which has our smart speakers. So we've got some Denon smart home speakers, which are really awesome. Claire's Nintendo Switch, Claire's phone, and Claire's iPad Pro is also connected to that one in the bedroom. I get more excited about this stuff than like almost anything else that we do here on the channel because I don't know, just a little bit of a network nerd with when it comes to like upgrading stuff. And it's finally good to have everything that we need sitting on 10 gig, right? Uh, we had a lot of 10 gig stuff here and there. It was kind of hodgepodged and and huddled together and just kind of ghetto. But now it's been planned out in a certain way. And I've got to say as well, I was going to get a UDM Pro for ages and I'm kind of glad that I held out on it until they released the SE and I saw them announce it a little while ago and I'm like, this thing is never going to be in stock in Australia. And M-Wave had one and I'm like, bye. The second I saw it, I'm like, bye. And then it kind of snowballed and domino affected into me just doing all of this. And it's taken me about 10 days to get it sorted to a point where it's completely usable. So we've had a couple outages here and there, but the configuration was really, really easy. It's not that, it's figuring out why things are doing things a certain way, even though it's reporting other things. But you know, that's, that's the life that we live. And I've got a lot of experience with doing this kind of stuff, but some stuff that I can't control, like the cables in the walls, because obviously we don't own the apartment. You know, we had to come up with solutions for that stuff with stuff that we weren't anticipating. And I hope this kind of helped guide you guys in a direction for that. Make sure you get yourself subscribed by clicking the subscribe button, ring the notification bell because YouTube sucks at sending out notifications. So if you want to see more videos like this, ring it. I'm your boy, Nigwick Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And thanks for coming along with me at the end of my network upgrade journey because yeah, it's been a whole process for the past however long. I don't know. There's lots of blinking lights. You guys want to see something funny? I buy a label maker. I don't pay attention for a couple days. And then I see this label on my chair that says Gronk. If you're an Aussie, you definitely know what this word means. Claire. Only Claire would do something like that. <laughs>